One of the most iconic redstone builds ever is the 7 segment display. If you're into computational redstone like me, you'll know that this device shows up everywhere. It takes in a single digit number, like 3, and after going through a huge circuit, it displays that number. But what you might not know is that it doesn't have to be this huge. This right here is the exact same device, yet way smaller. You can still put in any number and it'll work perfectly. So what's going on here? How can way less wires do the exact same thing? In this video, I'll be showing you the magic that's going on here and how you can use this technique to make any redstone build smaller. But first, let's take a look at the common design in more detail. It starts by taking in any binary number 0 through 9 on these four bits. For example, you can put in 0011 for the number 3 or 1001 for the number 9. Once it has that binary number, it uses a decoder to figure out which number you just put in. Right now, the input is 0, so the torch for 0 is turned on. But if you input 5, for example, then the torch for 5 turns on. From there, it uses an encoder to tell the display which segments should be on. So let's say you put in a 1, then the repeaters on the tower for 1 tell the display to activate this segment and this segment, which shows a 1. Or if you put in a 6, then the tower for 6 activates these segments, which shows a 6. And that's basically all there is to it. This is the most common technique, and it's what you'll see on most 7 segment displays. Now let's take a look at the smaller one. This design clearly doesn't use a decoder or an encoder. Instead, it looks like they went from 4 bits to 7 segments directly. So how was it made? Well, to be honest, I don't know the exact details. I've never looked at it super closely since finding it. But what I'm more confident in, and what I think is more valuable, is how anyone could go about making something like this themselves. Let's say your goal is to make a super small 4-bit to 7-segment display, just like this design. Right off the bat, this is a complicated problem. So one thing you might think to do is focus on just one segment at a time. Say you focused on just this segment first. This is on when the input is 0, 2, 6, or 8. Otherwise, it's off. Let's go ahead and make a nice truth table for this. The binary inputs 8, 4, 2, and 1 are now labeled A, B, C, and D. This is not super intuitive, but if you stare at the table long enough, you might eventually come up with this expression, not B and not D, or C and not D, which amazingly works. Even though it doesn't even use A and has almost no logic, this expression perfectly matches the table in every case. If you plug in 0, 1, 1, 0, or 6, it gives 1. If you plug in 0, 1, 0, 0, or 4, it gives 0. And best of all, this expression is super small in redstone. Just use two comparators for the AND gates and OR them together. But of course, staring at the table until you come up with this is not a great strategy. It would be really nice if there was a way to go from a table to a small expression in a more systematic way. Introducing K-maps, or Carnot maps. In short, a K-map is a visual tool to help minimize Boolean expressions. To show you how they work, let's say I have this table, and I want to make the smallest possible expression for it. The first thing I'll do is convert the table to a 4x4 grid. Each row is for a different combination of A and B, and each column is for a different combination of C and D. This creates somewhat of a coordinate system, where each coordinate is one of these 16 outputs. For example, this output right here is when A is 1, B is 0, C is 0, and D is 1. It's basically just a weirder way of showing the table. But now, here's the cool part. Thanks to how this grid is laid out, small expressions can be visualized as rectangles. For example, the expression A and not B and C is this rectangle. It's where A is 1, B is 0, and C is 1. So everywhere in this rectangle is where the expression is true. Or the expression C and D is this rectangle. It's where C is 1 and D is 1. And if the expression has all four letters, like A and B and C and D, it makes a tiny rectangle covering only one case. So now, to make an expression for this table, all you have to do is make rectangles to cover all the ones. And the less rectangles you use, the smaller the expression will be. In this case, the smallest possible number of rectangles is three. One here, one here, and one here that wraps around. Oring them all together creates the smallest expression to match the table perfectly. K-maps are beautiful because they've turned the problem into a visual one. If you want to use them yourself, I recommend checking out these resources. Also, I know I've been saying smallest expression throughout this video, but it's important to note that a K-map only makes one specific kind of smallest expression. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and use a K-map on the segment from earlier. I'll fill out the grid for 0 through 9, and then for the remaining 6 spots, I'll just put an X, which means I don't care about it. If I cover it with a rectangle, great. If I don't, also great. All that actually matters is that all 1s are covered and no zeros are covered. 
Earlier in the video, I said that if you stare at the table long enough, you might find the expression not B and not D, or C and not D, and now with this K-map, we can see exactly why that works. Not B and not D is the four corners, and C and not D is this rectangle. Together, they cover all the ones and none of the zeros. Pretty cool, right? Armed with your knowledge of K-maps, you can now make small expressions for all seven segments. And once you've done that, it only takes 20 minutes to make them all with tiny redstone circuits. All that's left to do is combine all the circuits into one device. The simplest way to do that is to just put them all next to each other. They all work individually, so as long as there's no interference or anything, the display will work. But as it turns out, it can still get smaller. You see, even though each segment circuit is optimized, it's still possible to find shortcuts when you consider the combined circuit. For example, if one output is A or B and C, and another is D or B and C, you don't have to build the B and C part twice. You can just build it once and share the signal. This doesn't change either output expression, and it makes the overall circuit smaller. I would love to say that there's a great way to find these shortcuts, but there kind of isn't. Minimizing logic for a multi-output function is notoriously hard. So hard, in fact, that if you find a fast way to do it, you'll literally win a million dollars. Plus, with Minecraft being a 3D game, some shortcuts simply won't be generated by any 2D circuit algorithm. Don't get me wrong here, K-maps are still an amazing tool, and they're used for minimization across many different redstone builds. But to make such a small device like this, it sadly takes both K-maps and manual shortcut finding. I know, that's a pretty annoying conclusion, but if you think about it, that's also what makes Minecraft so great. Finding those shortcuts is what allows for practically limitless optimization. I don't think redstone would be very fun if you could just generate the best circuit and build it immediately. Also, shortcuts allow for competition. Piston doors, for example, have a really cool competitive community, with people engineering crazier and crazier doors to optimize space or time. So on that note, I thought it'd be fun to end this video with a competition of my own. Whoever makes the smallest 4-bit to 7-segment display by the end of July will win a prize. All the requirements and information are in my Discord linked in the description. Please read through the requirements before building. You don't want to build one and then realize later it doesn't count. Good luck and have fun everyone! If you like this video, subscribe. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed. Peace out guys.